Hello, check, check. Yeah. Um, hello, good afternoon, everyone. So um, we are from PayPal. So uh, today, uh, my uh, I'm Wen Kai, and this is my colleague Matt. Today, uh, we are going to give us a t um, introduction about our rapid mo model and the strategy refresh framework using mainly in PayPal fraud detection area. So firstly, let me give a brief introduction uh, about myself. So uh, my name is Wen Kai. Uh, I've been part of a PayPal Global Machine Learning Scientist team for over seven years. So through my tenure, I've worked on various uh, critical machine learning model development, including those targeting of the account takeover, stolen financial, uh, ACH fraud, as well as innovative real-time graph-based fraud detection solution. So currently, I'm leading a dedicated team of machine learning engineer to drive the machine learning automation across all the PayPal. We focus on researching the latest machine learning algorithm from industry and academia to customizing those uh, algorithms to address our PayPal unique business problem. Um, our goal is to streamline the entire machine learning development lifecycle to swiftly and efficiently respond to fraud attacks prevent our model from deterioration while minimizing the operational cost. And then, uh, yeah, I will hand over to Matt to give an introduction. Yeah, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm a machine learning engineer on Wenkai's team. Um, in my three years at PayPal, I've primarily focused on um, automation across the machine learning development lifecycle working on um, initiatives such as our rapid model refresh framework, distributed training, and uh, coding assistance leveraging generative AI. Cool. Yeah, uh, today, today's uh, agenda uh, is showing like this. So firstly, I will give a brief introduction about the machine learning uh, in PayPal fraud detection. And then uh, I will give a brief introduction about our overall rapid refresh framework. So the framework contains of two parts. The first one is about the detection. So I will uh, introduce the smart trigger framework. Uh, the second part is about the reaction. So my colleague Matt will introduce how we bring ML ops practice into PayPal and then our homegrown um, risk solution playbook. Cool, uh, then let's get started. So firstly, let me give a very quick introduction about uh, machine learning in PayPal fraud detection. So uh, fraud detection is a, a one of the most crucial function at PayPal. So we deploy hundreds of models, uh, leveraging tens of thousands of features uh, in our system. So uh, these models and features then um, are using by a lot of rules to make the final decision. So this machine learning solution operates across multiple checkpoints cover different business portfolio uh, to mitigate various fraud behavior, such as account takeover, stolen financial, collusion, and so on. So however, the challenge we are facing here uh, is the fraudster are continuously evolving their tactics. So as these tactics shift, our machine learning model can experience this data drift. So while their effect effectiveness got deterioration over time because the pattern they were trained on no longer match the current trend. So to address this, one, our, one of our fundamental solution is to adopt a quick uh, model and a strategy refresh. Um, so by continuously incorporating the latest uh, data into our model, uh, we can ensure our model remain effectiveness uh, in identifying and mitigating the emerging threats. Um, but given the scale our, of our operation, as I mentioned, we have hundreds of models. So uh, automation is super critical in this process. Um, automation allowed us to fast implement and update our machine learning model, uh, which is crucial for adapting to new fraud trends, which um, it, this can not only enhance our ability to protect our customer, uh, but also reduce manual operation cost during this uh, uh, process. Uh, now, let me give a very quick introduction of our rapid uh, refresh framework. So, uh, our rapid refresh framework uh, aims to automatically update our model and the rules within day 
and even ours to counter the changing uh, business pressure and also uh, to mitigate uh, emerging fraud patterns. So there are three factors within our consideration. The first one uh, is the speed. So our solution creation should be super fast to adapt the fraud trend and incoming pressure. Um, the speed here is referred to the time uh, of the detection and then the time to the reaction. In addition to the speed, the scalability is our, also our second consideration. The framework should be easy to adapt to different uh, business area, enabling us to extend the benefit across all the um, business domain across our organization. The third part is about the effectiveness. So this framework aims to boost the efficiency by, in, by reducing the operational cost. Uh, besides, another benefit I want to highlight here, when we develop this framework, we also offer a variety of uh, reusable machine learning components and libraries based on our best practice um, and the research for handling Tableau data. So this component covers the feature selection, data normalization, AutoML for deep learning, uh, as most of our life model uh, are deep learning model, uh, and the optimization for training with large scale data set. So uh, the original purpose uh, to develop this type of algorithm and uh, uh, components are for automation purpose, but we found it super popular um, among the data scientists uh, community as this component can be leveraged to accelerate their day-to-day -day, uh, research and development for model version upgrade. And meanwhile, providing them a very strong benchmark to keep them innovative. Cool. Uh, then let me move to our rapid uh, refresh over framework. So uh, this, this framework consists of two main parts. The first part is about the detection. Uh, it determines when is the right timing to uh, trigger a solution refresh. Well, the react part is about how to respond by choosing the right algorithm to automatically create and deploy our solution to, to, the, to our life system. So each of these steps has its own challenge. So uh, during the detect phase, the primary challenge uh, is dealing with the delay feedback loops. Um, delay feedback loops is a very common problem uh, in the fraud detection area because um, uh, delay can va vary depends on the fraud type. A fraud type. For example, the account takeover type of fraud, uh, the feedback uh, usually comes within weeks, uh, while the stolen financial fraud uh, comes usually within months. Um, sometimes the like credit type of fraud can sometimes take over half a month to surface. So uh, because of this delay, uh, we cannot fully rely on traditional machine learning uh, evaluation method to evaluate our model, especially at a very early stage because um, those uh, feedback are not fully coming uh, in. So instead, we use uh, a lot of unsupervised machine learning techniques um, based on the data drift detection, uh, which can be, which have prove, proven to be very effective. I will give an introduce later uh, when I uh, delve delved into the detection phase. Um, along the side, uh, we also incorporate multiple alerts based on real-time traffic and the seasonality into our detect framework. Um, but the challenge uh, we are facing is uh, how to differentiate between the true alert and the false alert. Uh, it's uh, still uh, a little bit big challenge for us. Um, once the right population and symptom are identified, so the next question is about how to take action to mitigate the threat. So here, uh, speed and the effectiveness are two main factors we are considering. So to ensure speed, most of, most of our solution creation process are fully automated, uh, following ML ops practice to support our scale. Uh, while to maintain the effectiveness of our solution, uh, we've developed a lot of uh, machine learning algorithms tailored to address different symptoms. Uh, there, there could be multiple symptoms. For example, there could be overall machine learning model performance get deterioration. There could be only sub-portfolio got deterioration. For example, just several country, uh, several kind of products, the performance got uh, deteriorated. And also sometimes it's because of the fraud chain happening in very small and a specific population. So different symptoms we need to find different way to handle. So um, that will uh, refer to our comprehensive risk 
uh, solution playbook. So uh, later on, Matt will give us a deep introduction about uh, what kind of algorithm uh, we are providing for data scientists to choose to handle different kind of uh, uh, symptom identified uh, by the smart trigger framework. Um, and one more thing I also want to highlight uh, is about keep our overall solution ecosystem clean and simple. Because if you just continuously adding new solution um, to our life system, uh, it can lead to a over complex uh, ecosystem. So uh, in long run, it would be super hard for us to maintenance and also governance the overall uh, our solution, ML, ML solution ecosystem. So uh, our homegrown risk solution playbook also try to solve this problem to, to make sure our ecosystem clean. And then those kind of uh, uh, like uh, rule and model can be evolve uh, in time. Okay, cool. Uh, next, uh, let me give a quick deep dive of our detect framework, which is called uh, Smart Trigger. So uh, the Smart Trigger uh, aims to automatically find the optimal timing uh, to decide uh, when to train or retrain our machine learning model uh, in order to adapt new data. So the data change can be like some uh, product change or some fraud change, uh, as well as mo uh, maintaining model um, performance over time. Because as you all know, uh, machine le learning model naturally will deteriorate over time. So uh, how we do that? Uh, the first step uh, is about the uh, alerts con consolidation. So um, like across the fraud detection area, so different team, uh, they may set up their alert by their own purpose. For example, the BI team, they care more about the direct loss and the revenue. Uh, while the machine learning team, uh, we care more about uh, uh, whether the underlying data is drifting or not, uh, and also whether our model performance is deteriorating or not. While the rule uh, analysis team, they care more about the, their rule performance uh, and also the real-time kind of action rate uh, in their rule. So um, we come, firstly, is to combine all this kind of source together. Um, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, so long delay feedback is very common uh, in fraud detection area. So the, uh, the most critical thing is to handle uh, the long delay feedback we are having. Because uh, a lot of uh, metrics uh, you are seeing here uh, probably are not quite reliable at a very early stage. Uh, especially those directly tied to the feedback. For example, the loss may not come very, in very early stage, and the rule and the model performance because they are relying on the tagging. So those tagging uh, can also, uh, we cannot get the tagging at very early stage. So um, this is why uh, we introduce a lot of uh, unsupervised learning uh, to handle this type of situation. So uh, the key of, of our unsupervised learning uh, is we leverage the data drift detection. So we mainly uh, evaluate two parts. The first part is to compare the data uh, distribution between um, the ongoing kind of monitor data phase with our data uh, that we use to train our, of our model. We have multiple kind of uh, uh, metrics to measure the distribution difference. The second one is we apply the anomaly detection method to see how many anomaly data point we are observing at this time. Um, if we've seen a lot of uh, uh, numerous uh, anomaly data point we've identified in the risky and the gray population, then uh, we are just, there's a very strong correlation that they're saying, oh, at this time, probably uh, our model cannot uh, react very well. Um, but all of those kind of uh, unsupervised learning metrics, um, I will say it's not kind of 100 correlated to your method, uh, uh, to your final kind of target, because the eventual target is the loss uh, coming to our system. Um, but uh, they have more or less correlation uh, with the uh, eventual kind of loss. So what we are doing here is we uh, calculate a lot of metrics from history, and then we correlate them uh, to the history ground truth data. Uh, and then eventually, uh, we can assign a unified score for each alert uh, to indicate how severe they are. So uh, after we get this kind of a unified score for each alert, the alert uh, 
will trigger a different kind of a solution creation. So uh, they have multiple kind of a way uh, we handle the different alert. So the first type of uh, alert is kind of a trend. So usually the trend is uh, happen in very specific portfolio uh, with a very clean pattern. Usually we create uh, some rules directly uh, to handle this kind of a trend. The second type of alert uh, is called a sub-portfolio change. So um, Sub-portfolio change means um, just there are only subgroup of the model uh, have some performance deterioration. For example, some specific region, some specific products, or some specific customer segments. So here, uh, we usually use the incremental learning to handle this situation, because uh, uh, usually our full model training uh, use huge amount of data to retrain our base model take a very, very long time. So this is why uh, we leverage this kind of lightweight incremental learning to only focus on those sub-portfolio which are suffering the deterioration problem. Uh, and then the third type of the symptom is uh, overall performance. So uh, if our model run to the light, run in the life system for a while, the overall model performance will gradually deteriorate. If we identify this kind of symptom, we will uh, schedule um, uh, overall model performance uh, refresh. So that usually take a longer time because uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the data volume we use to train our base model is, uh, is huge. Cool. Uh, next, I will hand over to my colleague Matt uh, and uh, he will introduce uh, our risk solution playbook and also our ML ops capability. Cool. Matt. Yeah. Thanks, Mikai. So, Okay, yeah, we just reviewed the smart trigger system, which is basically answering the question of when a model should be retrained or rules should be updated. Um, and this React section is basically gonna answer the how. So we can start with a high level overview of the framework, which is designed to automatically generate and deploy ML based solutions in response to detected incoming pressure. And it's divided into two main cycles, the model automation cycle and the rule automation cycle. So the model automation cycle is um, your standard ML development life cycle, which begins with data preparation, um, followed by model training, deployment, and monitoring. And when a model completes this cycle, it will typically be handed over to the rule automation cycle, which begins by identifying an, an optimal threshold for the model's output score that will maximize the selected performance metric. Um, so that creates a rule, and we'll validate this rule by bringing it online first in a sort of shadow mode where it cannot actually take any action yet. And this is critical just to ensure there's no significant gap between the offline and online model behavior uh, prior to moving this rule to um, rule adjudication. And adjudication is just um, where if the model score is above the um, defined threshold, uh, we will take actions. And live monitoring is there as well, just to keep track of this rule's performance in real time, um, keeping track of things like its action rate and the estimated loss leakage. Um, and it's important to note as well that much of this process is automated, but we still incorporate um, crucial manual actions to handle alerts. And this includes potentially extending the rule validation process, um, deciding exactly when to do adjudication, uh, deciding whether a model should be retired because of some online offline discrepancy, or in the case where a live model um, starts to have some performance issues, whether we need to fall back to a previous version. And these manual interventions allow us to main maintain some control and ensure some human oversight, especially when dealing with uh, anomalies or unexpected situations. And lastly, yeah, a critical aspect of this overall flow is the feedback loop. So the rule automation cycle provides feedback signals to the model automation cycle regarding things such as uh, model usage, which models have been retired, uh, which are under adjudication, and the population they're serving, and more. And this data is typically managed by a uh, model repository within the model automation system. Okay, so yeah, the cornerstone of the strategy is automation. Um, the ability to quickly update the machine learning solutions is crucial. 
especially in the fast-paced environment like fraud detection, um, where fraudsters are continuously evolving their tactics. Um, to keep up with this, we're relying on robust reproducible ML pipelines that ensure our models are continuously adapting to the most recent data, and also um, sig this significantly reduces the manual effort required in model updates. To support this, we've implemented robust ML ops practices to efficiently manage numerous ML pipelines at scale. And this is a disciplined approach that involves cross-team collaboration um, with data scientists, engineers, and operations teams, each playing distinct roles, um, ranging from like model development to deployment and monitoring. Some of the specific capabilities that we provide include a set of standardized images that can be used for both um, development and deployment which reduces the gap significantly between the day-to-day -day research and production environments. Um, we have reusable templates and internal frameworks which help automate every component of the ML lifecycle, including data wrangling, feature selection, uh, model training, evaluation, deployment and serving, and even um, explainability. And for those components which are more standardized, such as uh, data preparation and deployment, we provide services that minimize the amount of coding that is required by the user. And all of these capabilities are provided on a single unified ML ops platform, uh, which we call Cosmos AI, and I'll discuss that in further detail on the following slide. But yeah, now let's take a deeper look at the suite of automated capabilities we have available to choose from whenever we're dealing with some incoming pressure from fraudsters which uh, we refer to as this uh, risk solution playbook. All of the capabilities here are grounded in the intelligence that we've gathered through extensive experience in the field, and the large majority of them are automated. So let's walk through some of the key components. Um, the base model refresh capability here is simply referring to training a new machine learning model from scratch um, for the problem at hand. And this is a critical process, um, fundamental process, that allows us to recalibrate our models, um, especially if incremental learning has been going on for many iterations. Um, the model can tend to emphasize the latest data, um, often referred to as catastrophic forgetting, um, where the historical data is um, suddenly forgotten by the model, and fraudsters can detect this and exploit this vulnerability, so it's important to uh, retrain. And retraining the base model also provides a chance to incorporate new features, which um, can improve performance. And um, we can take this opportunity to also absorb many of the trend rules that may have been created to mitigate new fraud patterns into the model. And that way, we keep our rule ecosystem uh, clean and simplified. We don't want it to be overly complex. Now, instead of um, implementing a full model refresh, you also have the option to perform an incremental uh, learning which allows us to make more targeted updates that are faster and more efficient. So incremental learning focuses on leveraging the latest data to improve the models at a sub-product or por portfolio level. And it's, um, of course, more efficient than retraining the entire model, um, especially when we have huge amounts of data and only certain segments show significant changes or, or are actually requiring updates. So the remaining capabilities here are actually not um, involving model training at all. So for example, in some scenarios, it may be sufficient to simply adjust the uh, rule threshold, um, re-optimizing across different segments to maximize key objective functions like loss catch or total payment volume or both. And in response to new and emerging threats, uh, um, we have an automated trend rule creation capability, which can use supervised tree-based models um, and unsupervised anomaly detection models to identify some abnormalities and um, create and release new rules very quickly. And finally, uh, we have feature discovery. So we're always trying to incorporate the most predictive features in our models. Um, and new features can be discovered all the time um, through story-based or statistic-based methods. So story-based basically just starts with the human. Um, maybe we notice a trend or pattern in the data directly. And statistic-based is, is essentially starting from the data where after performing certain aggregations, you might um, have some patterns emerge or, and predictive features can be discovered this way. Okay. Now, um, 
yeah, I'd just like to dive into our centralized ML ops platform called Cosmos AI. So this is our key internal platform for accelerating time to market for ML powered applications across PayPal. And it consolidates capabilities that were previously fragmented across multiple custom tools and isolated systems now into a single powerful system. Cosmos AI has um, taken a best of breed approach with abstraction, which um, is empowering us to select the most suitable technology, whether in-house or open source for each specific task. Uh, and this approach also enables us to select the ideal infrastructure for each task, um, leveraging both on-premises and cloud-based resources. So this flexibility helps to future-proof our ML platform and allows us to optimize each phase of the development lifecycle independently. And if you're interested in reading a little bit more about this uh, Cosmos AI platform, this, uh, there is a hyperlink here um, to a Medium article aligning a lot more details and the architecture of this platform. But in this slide, um, I'm gonna touch on the key functions that are used in our model automation. So for the data preparation, we have a one-stop data management service which streamlines data preparation by integrating uh, with our feature store. And it supports different use cases like incremental data preparation with data selection and can um, provide automated uh, um, data sanity checks. And for solution creation, we have a unified um, model training service, which provides a rich set of open source and proprietary model training frameworks. And it abstracts many of the infrastructure related complexities away from the data scientists. So our overall goal, in, in especially in the solution creation, is to allow data scientists to train a model for any business problem effectively and efficiently without being constrained by the size of the problem. And one of the largest uh, pain points that we collected directly from our data scientists was, um, for example, setting uh, cluster resources for their large scale distributed train jobs. So we developed a means of automatically determining and setting the optimal cluster resources, such as like the number of workers and machine types for the, for the cluster to not only just successfully um, complete the distributed train job, but also minimize the cost. And so now this is integrated into our model training service and data scientists no longer have to worry about setting this manually. On the solution deployment side, um, we're able to generate feature importance and model performance dashboards automatically for governance and deployment for models and rules is, is highly standardized as well. And in post-release, um, we have capabilities such as explainable AI service and a service for performing um, root cause analysis whenever a retrain model uh, gets rejected or is underperforming. So all of these components can be seamlessly connected together with a, like a GUI based workflow engine to create your end to end pipeline as a DAG. And each task in the pipeline can be run as it's in its own independent Docker image and specify its own resources. And the final pipeline can be scheduled or triggered by another system, for example, like the smart trigger uh, monitoring system we discussed to automatically trigger a model refresh pipeline when the model performance drops. Uh, but the user experience is not completely restricted to the UI. Um, advanced users who prefer a more programmatical access to the platform can work on what is called Cosmos AI Workbench. It's built on top of Jupyter Notebooks um, with access to the platform capabilities through um, Cosmos AI's API and SDK. And lastly, um, Cosmos AI provides a comprehensive framework for version management and tracking, uh, basically for tracking all aspects of the model training process, and that includes um, the training code, hyperparameters, configurations, and model performance metrics. So this really emphasizes um, reproducibility and traceability and collaboration, allowing um, data scientists to share their experiments with their team members and enabling others to recreate similar results. Okay, that's all we have, so please let us know if there's any questions.